Oh my God, I wish, I'm, I'm so glad actually that there's not like behind the scenes of these types of videos where, <laughs> where you could see like a blooper reel because right before I, I'm so glad though, like I hesitated for uh, just a second to hit the go live button and I literally dropped my props all over the floor. Um, so I'm really glad for that hesitation in that very moment. <laughs> Okay, so I want to give you guys a quick training and I think you're going to love it. Um, I actually heard this several years ago, but if you are in network marketing, you are going to want to be on this training and you are also going to want to share this with your team. So if you are catching me live, um, I want you to type live. If you are catching me on replay, I know as you guys are hopping on, a lot of you guys are um, catching videos now on replay because Facebook is being super wonky about showing live videos in the newsfeed, which is super weird. And they're also, have y'all seen this, where if you go live, sometimes they're just flat out deleting videos, which is really weird. So if you are on here, thank you so much for watching. Um, I am actually going to share this into the groups too. Um, if you are on here, I actually just did a training for my team and I went into some in depth about this, but I thought it was actually really good and, um, wanted to bring it out to you guys as well, because a lot of you guys aren't in my company or not on my team, but I want to share this with you because, this is something that if you are in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, frankly, if you're an entrepreneur in any kind of way whatsoever, you're going to want to see this training. Um, I actually saw this done several years ago, and then I saw another video my friend Jesse Lee did that actually did such a great job in actually putting this out to a visual. <clears throat> so uh, let me know when you're on, say hello. I'd love for you to say hi. Um, and also if you share, let me know if you share this as well because um, this is actually gonna be really, really good. So let me know if you shared, comment below. If you're catching me on live, just say hi or something because I can see the number but I can't see you until you say something. Um, and I wanna know if you're gonna get value from this. Um, so as I go, I wanna know if you feel like this is something that you resonate with, okay? So a lot of y'all are in network marketing. I know a lot of you guys follow me who are in direct sales and you have been for a while. Um, and so shout out to my peeps. So in network marketing, in order to build a business, hey, Vicki, uh, you are going to need to recruit, okay? Now, recruiting is kind of like, for some people, it's like a dirty word that nobody wants to talk about. It's always about like, oh, I like getting customers. I want people on the products. And yes, that's important. But in order to actually make a significant income in network marketing, you do need to like recruit other people. You have to build a team um, and like, listen, Let's just be real. Even in companies that say like you can build a full-time income on just customers, ours is like that as well. However, duplication is really what recruiting is all about. So when somebody like tries to scare you about building a team saying that you don't have to do that or you don't want to do that, it's actually, you, you really need to have both. You need to have business builders who want to run with you. And actually it's a lot more fun when you've got like a community of people who want to do this business with you. Um, but you can of course build a good sized business with just customers. But I want to talk to those of you who um, maybe feel stuck sometimes in the recruiting part of it. Um, I have won multiple awards in several different companies for being a top recruiter. Um, I've walk the stages, won the ruby rings, earn the trips, all of that, yada, yada. Um, I have personally recruited over 1,500 people just through Facebook alone. Um, and I, I want to share with you how, okay? So how do you find, now that's not just in my company, that's over the span of like Facebook, right? <clears throat> but I want to show you guys like recruiting people is not enough. You have to, there's a strategy behind it, okay? And how... You go about it in terms of attracting leaders, in terms of how to find leaders, how to get the runners who actually run with you and not to where you feel like you're just pulling dead weight. <laughs> okay, so share this if you think this will be valuable. I promise you won't regret it. Um, this is a generic training. I don't care what business you're in, what company you're in. Um, quite frankly, if you're in any kind of sales whatsoever, this is going to make sense to you. So I have a deck of cards. Um, so a couple of years ago, I heard a training uh, that, oh, I can't remember his name, but Matt Morris, I think, did a training on this um, several years ago, and it made so much sense to me. And then I saw a friend, Jessie Lee, she did, actually did a visual on it, and it was so good. I, have, I just have to show you this. So here's the thing. When you start your business, okay, 
You're gonna start your business and you're probably going to take a deep dive into wanting to learn all the things. You're gonna to wanna to read all the things, you're gonna feel like you have to memorize certain pieces of your comp plan and what do I need to hit these bonuses and that sort of thing. And I want to preface this whole training with don't get stuck in the learning side of it and personal development and the how-tos and the, all that kind of stuff. Um, some bits and pieces like in your fast start program are probably important. Okay. To learn, like, of course, like we have a fast start bonus, so like how to hit the fast start bonus. Like you need like a little worksheet and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But most people make a big mistake and they stay stuck in the learning process and they think that they have to figure it all out, know everything before they're, if they're like in a constant perpetual getting ready to get ready kind of phase. Right? So your main focus, especially right now, you guys, your main focus really should be showing up and showing up consistently. Maybe raise the volume a little bit more um, from what you were doing last month, right? This month, you need to raise the volume up a little bit more. Be a little bit more bold. You know why? It's because more people are searching for what you have. Whatever company you're a part of, um, it doesn't matter, honestly, if you've got a great product and you've got a great company where people are actually earning income, especially online, people need what you have. So if you are still stuck in no man's land or no activity land where you're not even showing up, you're not building your business, you are not only doing your own family a disservice, you are doing other people a disservice because people need what you have. Now more than ever, people need a business that they can do on the side from their phone, from their computer, from home, um, like right now, right? So if you're not convinced at this point that you need to show up and show up bigger and louder and a little bit more bold um, than ever before, I don't, know what, I don't know what to tell you. Like you need to show up. So here's the thing. Many times now, a lot of y'all um, might not know this, but there's some stats, okay, in terms of network marketing and, and numbers, like in terms of how many people you bring in as team members um, and like how many of them quit, like there's a whole churn percentage and, and all of that kind of stuff, talking about retention and whatever. Now, I'm only talking about business partners, right? So you might bring in customers, but I'm talking about when you recruit actual promoters, okay? So, um, and obviously if your company is like mine where it's free to enroll, um, this, this actually may increase your numbers quite a bit, like drastically because the barrier to entry is like nothing, right? So take that with a grain of salt, but here's what I'll say. I'm going to use a card deck to show you an analogy of how to get runners, how to get leaders into your business, okay? So on average, if you were to ask probably any of the top income earners in your company um, what they can attribute most of their business volume to, meaning like how many people, how many uh, legs, so to speak, can they attribute to most of their volume to? Most, on average, like industry-wide, most top income earners can attribute most of their volume, most of their check stems from four to six leaders in their business, four to six runners, okay? Now, when you think about it, you know, you hear about people who have 5,000 people, 1,000 people, 500 people, like lots, right, of people in their business as, as people who signed up to be distributors or reps, right? Considering the fact that it only usually has four to six that they would like this, like when you follow the trail all the way back up, four to six of those people are the actual leaders, okay, over the whole entire volume. That's mind blowing. And I want to show you how that actually works, okay? So in this whole training though, I want to lay the foundation with first, you cannot be addicted to the outcome. Your job um, is to talk to people, get them interested, whether you're messaging them or putting something out there to the world, inviting them to come through the door and take a closer look, at least take a peek, right? Your job is like in our business, we're called promoters. <laughs> so like for us, it's pretty cut and dry. Like we, our job is to promote. Um, we promote the business, we promote the product, like that's literally our role is to promote. Now, promoting is part of it, right? That's how you, that's basically you're putting it out there saying, hey, we got great stuff, we got a great team, we got a great product, you should come check us out, right? That whole thing, that's promoting, putting it out there. If you're not doing a lot of that, 
that's problem numero uno, okay? you ha It all starts with you. Like, what are you doing? When's the last time you posted something boldly um, on your social media? When's the last time you actually, instead of posting something, when's the last time you actually went into somebody's messenger and actually had a conversation? Not a weird, spammy, pammy, weird, awkward, yucky conversation. I'm talking like an actual conversation to see if they were open to checking something out, to see if they were open to looking at your product, if they were open to looking at your business, um, that kind of stuff. Like, don't be weird, don't send, just send a YouTube link with like no like context, right? You don't wanna do that, because that's weird and awkward. Nobody likes that. Um, hey, Monty. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys first about laying that foundation, okay? You cannot be stuck in procrastination mode, you cannot be stuck in overthinking mode, you cannot be stuck in uh, learning everything first mode, trust me, that's that's my personality. Listen, type A's, <laughs> this is the thing that will hold you back. If you're like, oh, I'm a type A, I'm a perfectionist. We sometimes, we, and I say we collectively, because I am that person, we tend to look at that as like, oh, I'm a perfectionist and I like everything just so. And listen, that crap will hold you back in your business, so stop it. <laughs> I'm talking to myself here too. Like it is the number one thing that holds people back in their business is they just can't get over themselves, right? <clears throat> um, or they can't get out of their own way. So when you're talking to people, and I'm again, I'm only talking about promoters here, you cannot be addicted to their response. And I was just sharing with my team earlier that this is a biological thing. This is a psychological thing that we, we feel good when someone says yes, we feel bad when someone says no or ignores us. Okay, that is just a, since third grade, when you didn't get picked for the dodgeball group in PE, right? You feel bad when you don't get picked, you feel good when you do get picked, okay? This is a thing in your DNA. In business, you have to flip that switch down. You cannot get addicted to the outcome of what other people say, you know why? Because when other people disappoint you, right? It's because not something that they did, it's because your expectations were up here and what they wanted to do is down here. The problem is not with them. The problem is that your expectations were so high that you allowed them in here and disappointing you, okay? And that can possibly keep you stuck and keep you from doing the things that you know you know you need to do. Like this is the world of YouTube and Facebook and free trainings and these kinds of videos you know what to do. You know the things to do, okay? Even if you think you don't know, you know enough to actually go do them. So, let me give you guys a little class, okay? If you find value in analogies, I like to talk in parables and analogies and stuff. So like, if you find value in visually learning something, you're gonna wanna share this with your team. I promise it's going to blow your mind. Okay, so here's the thing. How many cards, anybody know how many cards come in a deck of cards? including the jokers. Anybody know? Like type it in the comments. Um, I want to tell you, these are human beings. These are not just numbers. This is the law of numbers. This is the law of averages. Okay. But these are human beings here. <laughs> okay. So let's just say, so like including jokers, there are 54 humans here. Okay. 54 humans. Yes, Tori. So we're looking for jokers. We're looking for aces. So let me just like, let's lay this out here of what you're looking at, okay? <clears throat> On average, if in your team, let's say you asked any top income earner where they can attribute most of their volume to, most of them are going to say, I can pinpoint it all back to about four to six people in my network where a majority of my volume comes from, okay? So you're looking for like four to six, like you're looking for four to six jokers and aces. Now, numbers two through eight. Okay, so there are 16 face cards. So we're talking jacks, queens, kings, and aces. There are two jokers. There are 36 number cards. So two through 10, okay? Now, two through eight, they don't do anything in your business. They do nothing. They might sign up. Uh, and we're talking about promoters here, like distributors, right? These are not even including customers. These are people who enroll and they're like, yeah, let's do it. This is the most amazing thing ever. I'm gonna hit the top of the comp plan. I'm gonna talk to everybody and I'm, I'm really well connected. I know everybody, right? Two through eight, they're gonna come in, they're gonna hit the button, they're gonna join your business and they do zero. They do zero dollars. They order zero dollars, they do zero dollars. They don't even show up to the team calls. They're not even like using your group. They're clueless, they do nothing. Two through eight, okay? Um, nines and tens. 
maybe they run uh, an order every month. They order for themselves. They're like their own best customer. Now we love nines and tens, so don't get me wrong. These are all people here. These people have their own issues. They have their own limiting beliefs. They have their own baggage. They have their own cousin at Thanksgiving who says this is a scam. Like all these people have their own stuff, okay? So these are always human beings. However, two through eight, they do nothing. Uh, nines and tens, they're just basically glorified customers. They're enrolled as promoters, they order, great, but they don't actually do anything in the business. Jacks, jacks, they do a little bit. I like to call them hobbyists. Um, maybe they're doing like a thousand to a couple thousand dollars a month um, in sales, okay? In, so like they have a few customers, a couple, you know, hobbyists, also promoters on their team. Like they're, they're dabbling a little bit, they're hobbyists, okay? Jacks, or sorry, kings and queens. Kings and queens, these are people who they're, they're making probably like $1,000 a month, okay? Like in our business, um, they would be at like car bonus level, okay? So they're doing like $12,000 a month in sales or so-ish. Um, they're earning like anywhere between $1,000 to $1,500 a month. Uh, maybe they hit their car bonus, like in our company it's at $12,000. So we'll just, those are kings and queens, okay? Aces are your runners, Aces are the ones that you're looking for. Those are the probably the ones that are like at the top rank of your company. They're like the ones that you see, they're top recruiters, they're walking the stage, they're like dialed into everything. They're like, oh, you know, those people, right? Those are who you're looking for. You're looking for your aces. You're also looking for jokers. <laughs> okay, so the jokers are like, they're so rare. They're like the unicorn of network marketing. Um, the jokers are so magical that they could just come in and they're like, it seems like they joined and then like 90 days later they're at the top. Like they just have this special sauce, right? Just the magic touch, okay? Those are jokers. They're, they're like, the, uh, my friend Jesse Lee calls them freaks of nature. <laughs> so, okay. So now they exist. Here's the thing I want to tell you guys. Um, oh, you see the, okay. So you see the bottom of the card. Um, the thing I want to tell you guys is that I don't care if you're in a startup or if you're in a company that is 30 years old, or if you're in a company that is like less than 10 years old, it does not matter. They are out there. All of these people exist. Do not let some schmo trick you or fool you into thinking you have to join a startup to be successful or you have to join a 30 year old company to be successful. Nope. I have seen people from every company practically come in at every phase of that business and when they do it the right way and they work their business the way I'm about to tell you to, they are successful. I have also seen people come into a startup and they do nothing. I have also seen people come into a 30 year old company and they do nothing. The company, the age of the company does not matter. That's a myth, does not matter. What matters is what you do and how consistent you are. So let me give you an example. So I shuffled this, in fact, right y'all, right before I started this video, um, this is so applicable to business and life because right before I started this video, these cards went flying everywhere. <laughs> Like I dropped them all over the place and they're super slippery. Like one went over the sofa. It was awful. I kind of wish I hit the record button because I would totally somehow pull that and make it like a blooper because how many times in your business have you felt like everything was just getting lined up and orderly and all of a sudden your freaking cards go everywhere and you're like climbing under the sofa on your hands and knees trying to pick it all back up and put it back together again. <laughs> like that's actually what happened. Okay, so let me flip over these cards and I'm. this is your business. This is your business. You've just gotten off this really great training. You got your sheet like all ready and you're ready to start rocking out your business, right? And you're like, okay, I got a couple customers. Now I'm looking for team members. I'm gonna recruit somebody. Oh my gosh, it's a three. Okay, that person did nothing. They signed up, they said they were excited. You got them into your groups and they're enrolled and like you spent like all this time with them. You introduced them to your sponsor and all that and they did nothing. <laughs> they ghosted you. Now you just recruited somebody else. Another nothing, another six, what? Nothing, recruited somebody else. A four, nothing, another one, eight. Okay, it's a little bit closer, but they don't do anything either. They made a lot of promises. This one was like, uh, like making you a lot of promises. They were like telling you about all the cool people that they knew and who I even know this celebrity and oh my gosh, I know a fitness trainer and da 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 and they did nothing. Next one. 10. Okay. Now 10, this one is basically as a promoter who signed up to join your business. 
and they're ordering and they're a very loyal, they love your product. Like they're showing up to the Zooms um, and they order every month like faithfully, but they never really do anything other than that. Now we like these people. Okay. So like I love on these people a lot. I, they're like VIP customers basically. When, when somebody's a promoter and they constantly order, um, but they won't, don't really do anything in the business. They're basically a, a super awesome customer, okay? So we love these people. You're, a lot of your business will be made up of these types of people, okay? So, but that's a 10. They're still not building your business. Next one, eight. Oh my word, another nothing. King, okay. Now, I wanna, sh I wanna stop here and show you guys, statistically speaking, okay? Numbers wise, statistically speaking, I better not, I better not drop those cards. I swear I'm gonna rant. Okay, statistically speaking, you just got a king, but I want you to see how many people you had to recruit, not customers, promoters. Thank you, Darlene. Share this if you guys think it'll help your team, because I'm telling you, this stuff is going to blow your mind, especially when I keep going. Before you got this king, look at how many people you recruited personally. You worked them through the info funnel. They joined your business. They got a three-way chat. They're in your group. You've explained all the fast start, blah, 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 blah to them. And you like invested your heart into them. And you were like telling your spouse, ooh, I think they're gonna be great. Yes, I'm so good, I'm so excited. All these people did nothing. Statistically speaking, do you know where most people quit their business? Do you know? Any guesses? Where in here do most people quit their business? They quit their business on average after three disappointments. This is a bad example. There you go. After three, where's the king? After three disappointments, they quit their business. They just give up. After three people that they enroll who let them down, again, due to their own expectations, their own too high expectations that they placed on these people. Maybe they put too much pressure. Maybe they overwhelmed them. Maybe these people just got cold feet. Maybe these people went to the family reunion or whatever and their Aunt Sally told them, oh, that's stupid, and they dropped out. Most people give up and stop recruiting after three disappointments. So my encouragement to you and your team is what would happen if you just kept going, okay? So now this is this is only a king. I know this is a face card and that's super exciting. This is only a king. Kings are like in our business, they would basically be like a car bonus earner. This is like $12,000 a month in sales, okay? This is wonderful, but this is not who you're actually looking for. These are great. Treat them awesome, but this is not actually who you're looking for, okay? But this is a little bit of a motivation, all right? So, but don't quit here. Don't expect ace or joker behavior out of someone who's a king. Does that make sense? I don't know if that can resonate with you in your business, but some of you are putting pressure, ace and joker type of pressure on a king when they're only a king. They only want king type of business. Some of you guys are screwing up your team. You're turning off your kings because you're forcing them to do more than they even wanted. And that comes a point where like, you have to ask them what are your goals? You know, in our business, $12,000 a month, uh, it's the second rank of the comp plan, that's a car bonus. Do you know how many people just, they're honestly, they that's their ultimate like miracle is that they want a car bonus. That's their upper limit, that's what they want. And so if you come at them like, okay, you hit your car bonus, now let's go to, the top rank of the comp plan, you're gonna be a millionaire, and da, 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 all that kind of stuff, you very well may freak out your king enough where they go somewhere else. All right, so let's keep flipping over cards, okay? So here's another one, you just flipped over another one. Oh my gosh, an ace. Okay, so this is who you're looking for. Now, if you had quit, now, this is actually a really good analogy. Um, I have actually seen multiple times where somebody Recruits, 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 and they get a king, okay? And they're like, okay, I got all these duds, but I found a king, and my king, I'm gonna run that guy right up the flagpole. I'm gonna make him go all the way to the top. Me and him, man, we're gonna go all the way to the top. And you know what happens? They've recruited 
they've recruited right up to this king that they stopped building their business because they landed a king. Have you ever seen people do that? They got that one stud and now all of their attention is focusing on this stud and his team. You know what they call that in network marketing? They call that management mode. When you stop building your own business and you stop recruiting and you stop flipping cards because you're so focused on managing this guy and figuring out what he's doing and leading his team calls and checking in with him and what's he doing and look at his numbers and you refresh your back office and you refresh your back office and you refresh your back office to see what this guy and his team is doing. When you get stuck in management mode and you stop because you recruited a king, guess who you're missing out on? Guess who someone else is going to recruit? Your ace. You cannot stop flipping cards because the aces are out there. Okay, let's flip another one. Oh my word, seriously. Man, I was on a roll. I got this person, I got that person. Have I lost my touch? Maybe I should go to attraction marketing. Maybe I should stop you know, talking about the product and I should just go heavy on the business. Maybe I should talk, talk, stop talking about the business and I should go heavy on the product. What am I doing wrong? What if so-and-so was right? Have they changed something in the product? Does the comp plan not work anymore? Well, you know, sideline so-and-so did this and upline so-and-so is doing that and da 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 Okay, that's what happens when you go from king and ace down to a two. And you're like, what the heck is wrong with everybody else? That's when you start playing the blame game. Let's play another one. All right, jacks. So jacks are all right. Jacks are like the hobbyists, right? We like jacks. They dabble, they do a little bit. Up, oh, you got another one that's like super hot. I know everybody, I'm gonna do everything and they do zip, zero. Another nobody, another who doesn't do anything. Like seriously, Jack, another one who, you know, maybe they're a little bit of a hobbyist and all that. Seriously, look how many cards you have, another two. Look how many cards you have to go through to find aces or jokers. Jokers are who you're looking for. This is your unicorn. Now, so far you have found one ace and you found one joker, one out of all of that so far. And we're not even halfway through the deck. You're not even halfway through the deck. You've gone through all these people, all these people. Most people stop at three people who disappoint them. Most people get three disappointments and they quit their business or they don't like quit their business but they quit their business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they like disappear off the face of the earth. They're not plugged in. They got busy. Um, they've had life challenges, which is maybe that's true, but could it be an excuse? Could it be, um, procrastination? Could it be something that you're afraid of? Like there's all kinds of things that your brain, if you've ever read the book um, by Mel Robbins called the five second rule, your brain is a magical thing. Your brain will put all kinds of stuff in your head about all the reasons why you shouldn't do something. that's a little bit scary, like flipping cards and sorting through and prospecting and following up and making that Facebook post and doing the reach out. Your brain is gonna tell you, you should turn into the trainings. You should do laundry. Um, you need to call your mom. Uh, you need to do anything that's easier than prospecting and making a post that's a little bit scary and outside your comfort zone. Your brain is gonna justify all of those things that you should be doing, be doing instead of flipping all the cards. Here's the thing I wanna share with you guys. There's like a lot more cards to go through. Like there's a whole, <laughs> there's a lot of people in this world that you have not talked to yet, okay? You got two people out of this little bit. There's a ton of people that are out there who need your product, who need your business who need an opportunity to make money, who need a little extra something, something. There's a lot of people out there in this world. Like magnify this, multiply this by the millions. That's how many people are out there who need what you have. But if you get so stuck in your head and you're all wrapped up in your own, what if they say no, that's gonna make me feel bad. What if I look silly? What if so-and-so makes fun of me? What is so-and-so gonna think if I make that post? What if they say no? What if they don't respond at all? <gasps> like, and you don't even do it? All these people will potentially find out about your business or about network marketing in general from someone else. They will, it's just a matter of time. But if you're not willing to like get over your dang self and just go out there and keep sorting and keep flipping through the cards over and over and remove your emotions from 
whatever they do, who cares if it's a nine? Who cares if it's a four? Who cares? Like that's on them. Whatever they want to do or don't want to do is honestly none of your business. It's literally not your business. But if you want to build like more faster, it's simply a matter of flipping the cards, sifting and sorting faster, 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 faster. But you have to be consistent. You have to go consistently. You have to show up every day. You're going to get better as you go. But if you get stuck and sit there in personal development land forever, learning everything there is to know about everything and not actually doing anything, you're literally, it's like you're flipping a card once every six weeks. <laughs> you're recruiting someone new into your business every six weeks, every six months. Like, do you know how freaking long it's going to take you to find people to run with you? If all you're doing is attracting customers or if all you're doing is like learning but never implementing, I don't care if you show up to every single team call, every single Zim that you have. If you don't actually take what you learn and do it, you're literally going to go so slow. It's going to take you forever to get through these cards. The pros, the people that you see walking the stage, the people that you see earning the awards and the trips and the income that you desire, whatever that is, do you know the difference between them and you? The difference is that they're just going faster. They're sorting. They're not getting emotional about it. They're literally not letting anything distract them or hold them back. They're not staying stuck in their own limiting beliefs in their mind. They know, they know that they know that they know. I know what I have, I'm confident enough in it, and I want to help people get into this and at least open the door to see if it's a good fit. If it's not a good fit, okay, here's something that is like as old as the hills, okay, and hopefully you know this. Some will, some won't, so what? Next card, keep flipping the cards. The people are out there. You might get like twos through eights, you might get 25 of them in a row, honestly. Like I've had, you're, you're, especially the longer you go, you're gonna have like droughts, <laughs> okay? It's just, this is what it is. Ask any entrepreneur, ask any realtor, ask any person who like sells anything for anything, not just network marketing, anybody who sells anything. You're, you're, the longer you do it, you're gonna be able to go back and realize, wow, I had a hot season and yeah, I've been through some dry spells. That's just part of it. If you're serious about making this into a business, like that you're actually serious about doing, you better be looking at this like as a 10 year thing, as a 15 year thing, as a 30 year thing. Because if you're not in it for the long haul, like I'm not, listen, I, like I've been married for 25 years. I'm not a one hit wonder, one night stand kind of person. Like it, unless that's your jam, like no judgment if you're just in it for like hit it and quit it, kind of like earn a quick bonus and then you're out. If you're in it for the long haul to actually build an income that pays you residually, residual income is a long-term game. Fast start bonuses are great in the beginning. Residual income, like legacy wealth, big income, like residually, you're talking years to build that stably. Some people can build a big income quick, but it's, it's like on a very thin layer of foundation, right? It's very, very like the iceberg is just itty, itty bitty underneath there long lasting residual income in an actual business that you take seriously it takes years to develop that kind of stability and strength to withstand things that come crashing down or falling out of the sky or whatever right like your car is falling over the place and having to crawl under your sofa to put it all back together like you're going to have to do those kinds of things okay so i recommend if you are a visual type person go get a deck of cards and like just sit it next to your desk wherever it is that you work sit a deck of cards next to your desk and go through occasionally when you start feeling down, when you start feeling like the business isn't working, your sideline, you know, it's your upline's fault. Your upline is not connected anymore and she's not doing this. And so-and-so said this about the product and this, and the, all that kind of stuff. When you start getting, cause you will, it's just a matter of time. You will get into your head like that. When that happens, just start flipping through the cards. It's like, a, almost like do it while you're on a call, do it while you're doing like personal development, while you're listening to an audiobook. just start flipping through the cards and just see. I want you to see how much you have to sift and sort, but you will find them. You will, they are out there. They are in need of whatever it is that you have, but you also have to be that kind of person who has the stick-to-itiveness 
to attract and make them want to lock arms with you. That's a whole other piece of the puzzle. If you are not the type of person who acts with integrity, if you are not the type of person who actually shows up and who takes your business seriously, you might find those aces and jokers, but they might not want to lock arms with you. You have to have that kind of, yeah, I can trust that person. Yeah, they're gonna stick to it. They're not just gonna hit it and quit it kind of thing. Like they're, they're actually somebody I want to not only attach my name to the company, but I want to attach my name to that person, you, right? You have to be that person. So I hope that was helpful. Y'all go get yourselves a deck of cards. Use it as a visual reminder that you have to stick to it. You have to keep sifting and sorting. Stop getting attached to the outcome. Go for these people. These are these are humans behind these numbers, but it is a law of numbers. It's just the law of averages. So I hope that was helpful. Share it with your teams. Let me know if you shared it. If you caught me on live, say hi. I will come back and comment. If you caught me on replay, just say I uh, caught you on replay. And let me know if you have any questions or if this was helpful. I'd love to hear back from you. And I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye, guys.